Hi, I'm Kellen. Sometimes I do stuff with Ink Tech. I'm going to do more soon, I promise. I'm very glad that Rob is uh, letting me help him with this review here. Um, I chose this episode, Outbreak, because I love the writing in it. And I love, well, you're, you're going to see. It's very unique among any Ben 10 episode ever for, uh, for what happens in it. I think that's enough to warrant importance as a five. But we'll see what Rob thinks. Thanks, Kellen. Always glad to have you here. Yeah, so Outbreak is famous for this key factor that makes it stand out from every other episode of Ben 10. And if you've seen this one before, you know what I'm talking about. But as for the episode itself, well, so this is an episode where Ben has to learn how to be useful without the Omnitrix, which has never been done before. I'll get more into this during the rating section, but this one really should have been more about Ben's leadership than him just learning to fight without the Omnitrix. It has all the building blocks of a story to help evolve Ben as a leader, and ultimately Ben's experience with his aliens to deduce how to combat them and exploit their weaknesses and then command his own mini army at the end is the key to defeating Siphon, not just fighting without the Omnitrix. It's Ben's years of prepared combat knowledge and skills that leads to victory. Ben actually doesn't do much. In fact, the episode ends with him using the Omnitrix to fight Liam. So kind of a pointless lesson, especially to do it again for like the Ben 10,000th time. Also, most of the aliens Ben uses in this episode were voiced by Yuri Lowenthal, the main actor for Ben Tennyson. So that was always neat to me. It should be noted that while Kellen and I were recording this episode, it was plagued with technical difficulties, which will speak for themselves when you get to the breakdown. But well, we still got through it. That's what matters. So anyways, if this is your first breakdown and you're curious about how my rating system works, there's a detailed description down below, along with a link to all my previous breakdowns. But by all means, watch this one first. I'm sure you'll still enjoy it. So I've already mentioned this before, but the votes did sway in favor of counting Gwen's It's Heroes Time towards the counter. But I wanted to bring that up again in case y'all missed it. But going back through older breakdowns, this one also caught my eye. Which means minimal hero time and zero Julie time. And with the way we've been validating each catchphrase, this one should count too. So I'll be retroactively adding it in. The hero time counter is now at 36. I'm also playing Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl 2 during my Tuesday streams. I'll be doing this on Twitch, but you can catch my first pass on our second channel, The Rust Bucket. I got the Ultimate Edition, so I have a ton of bonus content to get through in the game as well. And I want to give a major shout out to all y'all that helped us meet our Taurus keychain goal. We had to sell a whopping 500 of them just for them to get made, and y'all took it a step further, and I am incredibly grateful. All profits go directly into help helping us fund the motion comic, where the first three episodes are on our channel right now. It's been getting pretty solid reviews so far, so I'm very ecstatic with how this is turning out. I'm looking forward to the next batch of episodes coming soon, but for now, let's jump right into the episode. On November 24th, 2012, Jeffrey Thorne gave us Outbreak. Ben once again lets his ego get the best of him, and he struggles with learning how to be useful without the Omnitrix. Pretty poor timing, as Dr. Psychobos breaks into the plumber base to steal a piece of the Omnitrix, which accidentally turns Rook, Siphon, and a few other prisoners into Omnitrix transformation hybrids. On top of that, the Omnitrix is still malfunctioning, causing Ben to mistransform a ton as well. Oh, and Bellwood's about to be sucked into the Null Void too. There's a lot going on, so let's just get right in it. Yippee. USS Enterprise. Huh? Yeah. Psychobos' ship. It looks similar to like the buildings on Brainstorm's planet. Yeah, the mushrooms. There. Yeah. This is where Jim Carrey was teleported at the end of Sonic the Hedgehog. Easy, old friend. So Zed's got some like glitch going on with the Nematrix. Strong rope. It's orange. That's the strongest kind of rope. Yeah. It's orange rope. The spider thing is somehow much stronger. Do you have a favorite predator, by the way? Um, I kind of like that one because it does the whole red net thing. It's fun. They're they're all pretty fun. I like Hypnotic, but he hasn't shown up yet. Oh, I just got that Hypnotic Hypnotic. Haha. <laughs> you said you would have the Nematrix fixed by now. Malware's second form, or technically third form if you count the yellow one. We saw him as that before, yeah? Uh, at the end of the last season, they tell Malware's story out of order a lot more than I realized because this is the second time you see this form, but you still have haven't seen the flashback to show why he looks like this yet. I'm kind of fine with that. I, I mean, at the time, of course, I was confused like everybody else, but it's not often you tell the story out of order, at least in this show. The beast continues to change form at random. This would be so much easier with an actual wrench. Ugh. Pathetic piece of Galvin technology. Those fucking Galvins. What is he even doing? What's he turning? Is he just sort of rubbing it until it does something? Yeah. 
It's not a genie lamp, Psychova. He rubs it and then an ecto neurite pops out. Aw shit, now my camera's lagging like fucking crazy. I think you need a new computer. I, I think she's struggling. Shit, yeah, when Premiere's playing, I lag, but when it's paused, I'm fine. That sounds like a CPU issue, you know? Let, let me, I'm sorry to have to keep fucking with the settings. And I use the term loosely. I could just look laggy. I mean, the whole point of the breakdown is about the show, and if the show looks fine, I could be laggy. The virus has spread to Rob's camera. Malware, leave me alone. And I, I use the term loosely. That always pissed me off, right there. You see what I mean? The uneven... Oh, the triangles the being uneven. Yeah. I, what's a math word? The, the, the angle? The angle. Thank you. The alligator mouth is a bit closed. -er. Gotta get those angles tight. There's a big E on the right. E for evil. Yes. In case you <laughs> to stabilize the Nematrix resides within the Omnitrix. So they need the Omnitrix to stabilize the Nematrix. But the whole point of the Nematrix was to, like, imitate the Omnitrix. So just go get the Omnitrix and take that. I think that's a bit harder to accomplish than just taking a piece out. You know it would be funny if there was a villain that was just trying to steal the Omnitrix piece by piece. And then Ben wakes up one day and he's just like, where is it? I think you would notice... Uh, even like two tenths of the way through. Two tenths also could be rounded down to one fifth. Shut up. Let's go. <laughs> I'll retrieve it. Your single minded pursuit of Ben Tennyson as a hunting trophy has clouded your sight of our true goal. Not to me. What the hell is that thing? Why doesn't he use this against Ben? That's this universe's version of a Pokeball. He should just use the Pokeball. Look how effective well, this is. It's not a Pokemon, Rob. Okay, he turns into Pokemon. <laughs> I who built the Nemetrix. Dr. Psychobos is the true most powerful villain. Has Brainstorm ever done that? Held them in stasis lock like that? No, not like this. Another example of like an alien using its powers better than Ben. I love the look of the implants too. He's such a cool character. I don't know how that would close flushly against the shell. That, that looks uncomfortable. I never liked the idea of the brain being outside the body anyway. It's technically in it, in a way. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I'll do it myself, he says. He can fly too? Brainstorm, he's levitated before, but he's never just like flown around like a spaceship. Okay. What happened to Malware's eye there? Oh, you're right. That's his surprised emoticon. We need a whole Malware emote set. Yeah, for the Discord. Yeah. I wish my luggage did that. You have to do it yourself. <laughs> You usually do a, a little weird owl for that last part. Yeah. When his shoes are unlaced, he trips up on his face, Ben 10. When nickels turn to dimes, he gets a credit line, Ben 10. The clock is striking nine for tequila and a lime, Ben 10. You haven't thought of it yet? No. I usually, I would, I'll sit here and just like think. Let's think, let's think. I keep going toward the word brine. It's hero brine. It's hero brine. <laughs> that sucks. Um... <laughs> See, it's hard. I keep going back to Brian too. Damn it. If crafting you mine, it's hero Brian. <laughs> you know what? That's polluted my thoughts now. That's all That's all I can think of. That's the one this time. What did you say? If crafting you do mine, it's hero Brian. <laughs> if, all right, all right. If crafting is... Craft fuck, hang on. What was it? <laughs> <laughs> if crafting you do... This is stupid. <laughs> if crafting you do mine, it's hero Brian. Ben 10. Just for you. You ever look at your child and you're just disappointed? Oh yeah. There's a reason he doesn't live with us anymore. <laughs> Get on with it. I love seeing them train. So how come they're like all circuity, but inside they're just stone pillar? That's true. What's and the point of these? It's budget cuts. It's it's all made from uh, Blue Kitchen Dreba making paper mache. There's the belt! The freaking belt. Saying we should spar more often. Oh, this is Wildvine's new voice. Oh, he's like a weed, right? Okay. Yeah, he, sp Got he speaks kind of like a stoner. It's D in Omniverse? No way. Beats me. I never went in before. But I like what he can do. You're always saying we should spar more often. I, I like Jim Ward, but this is fine. <laughs> 
that's awesome. When I've watched this before, it looked like Wildvine jumps and Rook transforms Ben. Because look, he smacks the Omnitrix. Yeah, but the aura starts off before that. Yeah, I think it's just Ben pinning him down. But it, it'd be cool if like Rook was fighting Ben and he did try to like transform him for a better go. This is one of those times where he can just change himself with his mind. I wish he would do that more often. Same. That guy's cheap, but I've got the Omnitrix, so I win. Man. I hate that. They're doing another story where it's like Ben's gotta learn how to be a hero without the Omnitrix. Yeah, he's got his old ego back and it's clouding his judgment, young grasshopper. It's a new series. We gotta we gotta do it all over again. I do love this episode though, but like it's it's built on something that he should already get like a dozen times over by now. It does something new though. That's what I'm excited for. What happens if you ever do not have the Omnitrix? The Omnitrix never fails. Whoa. Never? Never? <laughs> Never? We're just gonna say never. Yeah, right. Uh, he's just an amnesiac at this point. <laughs> Something happened to him to make him forget, like, the events of Secrets of the Aussie Tricks <laughs> and many things since then. Maybe constantly switching his intellect between different forms causes him to have immense memory loss. Yeah, that can't be good. Switching between being as smart as Grey Matter to as dumb as Wrath in a Flash must put you through some mental whiplash. That definitely kills some brain cells. <laughs> so I never fail. Never? It wouldn't be a bad idea to do some drills without the Omnitrix. Might isn't always right. Episode 5, Ben. Come on. <laughs> I love this. Snack machines on Earth. That is not a snack machine. <laughs> Why does everything in this base have to be so alien? That is not a snack machine. Ben's just going senile. That's how I'm headcanoning this. It, what is he putting a coin into? Put coin in, press button, juice box. Yeah, he definitely just jammed some signal there. There's gonna be a plumber in distress that can't get a hold of anybody because there's a quarter. It looks like a weed. Comment what you think this thing does. Yeah, what do you think this is? There are three different punishments you can give to a random person around the plumber base. Yeah. <laughs> that is not a. <laughs> I love that. Multiple targets incoming. Those things are cool. Uh, pincer things look like paper, though. Yeah, I, n I never really like when they make stuff look super flat. Like when they draw clockwork's fingers or something and they just look yeah. flaky. <laughs> Oh, those things are giant. Wow. Concentrate fire. Why does he need that platform? Yeah, what's that Gwendis? I thought you could fly. He's like, I'm tired, man. All right, you evil robots. That was a weird way to activate it. He did the two fingers thing and then it slides open. That's not how that works. Hey, brainstorm guy. If only he could transform mentally, right? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Wow, the, he is the most effective Ben 10 villain. He rolls up, ambushes the plumbers, scrambles them all, grabs Ben before he transforms, and swipes this piece it like nothing. It, He's yeah. in and out in like 30 seconds. Vilgax should be teaming up with this guy. <laughs> <laughs> the piece touches a part of his brain and he forgets what the word milk is. The cerebral crustacean is escaping! Then get him! Ow! Ow! Ooh, I always loved how this looked with all the curvy dots and the lightning. Yeah, I wonder what that is. Just like radiation. That omni energy. <laughs> this is such a great design too. Somehow like the Ravana Gander patterns match perfectly with the Gorman shape. They did a good job on, on Rook Chuck. Yeah, great transformation, too. This is unsettling. Now, do you think he should have gotten a slightly different voice? What, like, voice effect-wise, or...? I don't know, like, his his whole body changed, but he... This is unsettling. He's still just Rook. Maybe from a union standpoint, that would have counted as another character, and then they would have had to pay him more. Or maybe they just didn't feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like in the reboot, where all of Kevin's aliens are still just Greg Sipes. Another on the tricks? Dark matter. First, I could use a chain. Incoming! Come at me, matchstick! Prepare to meet bootleg! He made bank off that one. Phased pulse clips! That's adorable. First squad fall back and change ammo. Second squad, give him cover! That is cool though. I'm loving to see like the plumber procedures and stuff. I would have liked to see different color beams from that. Yeah, changing the ammo. It should it should look changing visually different. Something else. Yeah. yeah. Now he's the one with amnesia. Where am I? The intruder escaped. 
Man, they got this shit set up fast. It's like they knew. They're like, one of these days, Ben's gonna fuck up somehow, so we gotta be ready. That doesn't look like something that expanded out of something either. That looks like it would have taken them a little bit of time to... Yeah, this is built in. It's right there. It's me, Aspen. Rook. Ew. Wow. What's, what about him is gross? That's, yeah, that's so mean. Ew. Ben is having a little problem of his own right now. We'll just reboot the Omnitrix. At least things can't get any worse. Are you crazy? Never say that out loud. I love this recurring joke. I it's it's one of my favorite parts of the episode. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Now, why did it do that? Go that far down and specifically go to these three friends. Was anybody else affected? It's the Omnitrix AI. The Omnitrix is like, you know what would be funny? Yeah. <laughs> the Omnitrix is trying to teach Ben a lesson itself now. It's like, oh, you're really relying on me too hard? How about I do the teaching this time? Who do you hate the most in this building? <laughs> Let me see that foot shift. Going from two toes to three. Blorp. Christina, who still doesn't talk. Yeah, she still hasn't talked yet. I wonder if like they always planned on her being mute, but eventually they're like, no, we'll we'll make her talk. <laughs> this design is awesome. Excellent. When it comes up, oh yeah, I forgot he gets affected too. He is not ready for this. I don't like it. I like that design. I feel like the aliens they're fused with, they probably chose based on like what would aesthetically fit with them the most. And he's got red fire too. Yeah, this is so awesome. Can you imagine like in Alien Force when Siphon was just Vilgax's lackey? He would one day be this badass. Cheer up, Bubbles. You can even see his neck. Most Pyronites, you, ne you never see the neck, but with him, they made the exception to sell like the skeleton look for him more. Get that secondary security grid back up to full power. We yeah. know, we're looking at it. You're <laughs> not doing anything. You're just, you're just backseat driving. <laughs> Max, listen. This is my job. This is hard enough without you yelling at me shit I already know. Guys? Genetic stabilizers, check. I'm going to baby! Welcome to the family, little guy. See, I thought they were gonna do like the classic Ben 10 thing where like he gets an alien, it seems like he sucks or he doesn't know how to use it, and then he unlocks like this special power, but it's like, no, walk a trout, this is it. That's what I love about this episode. It's so nonchalant with its new alien unlocks. Yeah, he's just like, boom, new alien. Yeah. And right now he's voiced by Yuri Lowenthal. He voices all of the Outbreak aliens because I believe they, yeah. they weren't originally intended to come back. Who voices him? Like, Yuri still voices him. He's always walking trout? Yeah, in, in future episodes, it's more of a nasally kind of, Are you killing me? Okay, I like this little pattern on the back. It kind of looks like a wrench. That's on. You think? There appears to be a piece missing from the Omnitrix. That evil brainstorm guy took it. He said it as if, like, he noticed it when it first happened, but here he just let Blue Kitch and Dreba waste so much time trying to figure it out. He was quizzing him. Let's see if they'll figure it out first. I, I, I got time. He heard it, me. He wouldn't die. Oh wait, does Blue Kitchen Dreba know who Dr. Saipkobos is? Mm, we couldn't possibly fix that. I'm just going to stay this way? He's so funny looking too. Like he's just got straight up feet. Just yeah. little like sock looking he's like just he's just standing there a posing. The proto tool is too big to stay on him. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, don't lose it. Keep the contractions Remember in. Remember what your therapist told you. Contact Azimuth for assistance. If the communication system was up. Which it is not. At least things cannot get any worse. Dude. I love, by the way, that shock squatches, shocks just sound like a monkey screaming and exploding. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> The sound designers never really talked about it, but they actually exploded a real monkey for that sound. Yeah, they're very dedicated to this craft. And the monkey was fine with it too. He was happy to be on TV. <laughs> got the hang of it. Fistina, I feel like got the weakest design for the merged alien because like the mechamorph pattern doesn't really do much. In fact, it, it kind of takes away from her design. I feel like she would, it would have been cool to merge her with something that like would have complemented her armor, like NRG or Armadrillo or something. It is a big chicken. <laughs> That's cool. You never really see Upgrade fight as like a, a shapeshifter. Yeah, and there's like little lobs coming off of it to show it's kind of unstable. Yeah, like she doesn't really know what she's doing. She's like, well, I could probably do this. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting out of here. 
They can't stop us all. <laughs> okay, so so that voice filter made me not able to understand what he was saying the first time around. When I was a kid, I could not understand what Humonga Chicken was saying. Like they pitched it down like maybe 90% when 95 would have been okay. Or 10% when five would have been okay. I can numbers. I can vary numbers today. We gotta have a we gotta turn this breakdown into a whole math lesson. I love how the fur gets spiky when they do the electrical attacks too. That always sounds like dubstep to me. Drops the bass. This is way out of hand. I've always loved the little adorable karate chop. He just looks over like he's so used to his combat and melee attacks. He's not fighting like an alien. In fact, if he was intuitive enough with the Gormand powers, when Psychobos was flying away, he could just catch him with his tongues and pull him back in. He's never been a different species before. Most people don't. I'm <laughs> His freaking head takes up the whole screen like Fisk. Foreshadowing of Waka Trout's future powers. I love that he, he like smacks him in the face a little bit before he runs. Do you think it couldn't get any worse? I thought you said not to say that. You made me say it! I really do not think we are talking cause and effect here. That, that exchange right there was my pitching of how much better the comedic writing was in Omniverse to people. They're like, it looks weird. And I'm like, yeah, but it's really funny. Watch this. I feel like their, their humor is best when like, I love this dynamic here but it's like when they're doing jokes that are just kind of too over the top like the ditto looney tunes reference that went on for like two and a half minutes i wasn't really digging that i think it was the annihilarg episode but i just remember groaning constantly through it because the uh, jokes just stopped just didn't stop coming i was like i can't take this battle seriously they just won't stop with the nrg is g-o-o-d <laughs> I cannot fight like this. Just stop being you so much and be me. Be me. I'm the best. You're up, Chuck. Eat something. <laughs> I've never seen someone so happy to see a pile of gravel. <laughs> He's just taking his time here, enjoying himself. Now up, Chuck it. <laughs> one hits every single one of them and tosses them in the hole. <laughs> The Gormand equivalent to like cocking your gun when you're trying to threat someone. See, Rook kills his enemies. I'm still thinking about the face change. We, he saw his tummy rumbling and immediately he was just like... Yeah. We have to go after them! You can't go down there as a waka trout! So he does have a species name, Ichthy Pyrambuloid. Thanks for remembering it. I, I never can. But they call him a waka trout slang, sort of like the Nosdenians, they slang call it megawatt. And then Ben just rolls with it, and he was like, okay, well, that's what this alien's called. It's a good thing that he didn't get a open transformation and just call it sludge puppy. With this logic, that's what he would do. He would be like, oh, this is slang for that species? That's the alien's name. You have no special abilities without the Omnitrix. I am taking a team down there without you. You are a liability. Why are you being so harsh on him? Rook's got a lot of pent up aggression towards Ben that's just seeping out through the Gormand rage. The only way out is through this room. I like that his feet are exposed. <laughs> Why'd you make us go up there? Well, what are you doing down here, you coward? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't really understand that the first time either. He just starts going off. <laughs> That's a alien chicken for something very offensive. He sounds like Miss Pal from Jimmy Neutron. Have you forgotten who your master is? Oh, stop your plan! Yeah, I, I have to concentrate really hard on like figuring out what he's saying. There are other ways to pitch a voice down to. I feel like they chose the standard way when they could have got around it maybe with like. There's a great plugin. This is actually what I'm using for 5YL uh, motion comic. There's vocal synth and then there's poly verse music's uh, manipulator. You can pitch down the formant and the octave just a little bit and there is some chop on it but it would sound like it came out of a vaxisaurian throat whereas the, these guys just did a pitch shift down and maybe just a little bit too far but they're you know the masters of it. I am like a slug compared to these guys. I mean it's still more than I can do. All the, the stuff that you do for the filters in 5YL I don't know what you're doing but I can hear that you're pulling off things that I wouldn't even begin to know how you did it. Echo, echo! 
Mind if I invite some friends? Armadrillo! Uh, you alright, dude? Look, tag in! You find the ghost boy. I'll take the way, bad. Lone Star! Won't throwing anything into a black hole just create more black hole? Slingshot! Going up? Feedback! Okay, that works. Got any more surprise ideas? Transformation compromised. Security protocol 5. <laughs> It's just like there's like these special understandings that you have with the software. If they had messed with the formant and the octave, they also could have messed with the dry wet to make it so that it didn't completely overtake the voice like this pitch shift did. Your escape attempt was merely a diversion. Bye, bird. A distraction. Really? He really doesn't that know dumb? what that is. Yeah, he's like, he couldn't even finish the word. I, I feel like he was a bit smarter in the first episode. You have no idea where you are, do you? <laughs> okay, so in the first run of it, before he revealed that they were where the null void projector was and that's what he meant, I thought that was just an insult on his intelligence. <laughs> like, do you know where you are? Are you okay? That's what I thought he meant and I laughed so hard. <laughs> you have no idea where you are, do you? So this is interesting because the portal effect they use is the same portal effect they use for uh, Ultimate Alien and Alien Force for the Null Void, which I now just realized is also the same background they use for Echo Echo's transformation. But later on, Omniverse does do his own custom portal effect for the Null Void. Attention, Jammers! I am Typhon! Why would they have this? They held a Skrillex concert there last week. Okay, let's put a small one there, <laughs> and a big one there, and then a small one has a little hat on top of it. And then hook it up to the comms. That's Siphon? He's actually kind of cool now. Right? I've connected the space's power core directly to the Null Void Gate. If the gate overloads, all of Bellwood will be sucked in. This is exactly what Max did to the hybrid. The Null Void grenade blew up and then pulled everything in that vicinity into the Null Void. The poor, innocent citizens of Bellwood. I know it's a lot to ask, but I wish they had spent some extra bucks on uh, giving him more eye expressions during this. Who chose not to save him? Oh, he slowly raised his head a little bit. There you go. That's a really cool model, too, there. The, the core innards there. I love all of the little turrets and stuff on top of it. They do that a lot with the ships, too. They slap on these turrets. That's like a battleship, right? That, that has to be a spaceship. Yeah, this whole thing is a spaceship, and they don't... Does really it ever launch? Like... Uh, it does. In, um... In fact, I think the episode's called Out to Launch or something. The Final Countdown, that's what it's called. The 76th episode. So, like, five episodes before the series ends permanently, they actually use it as a spaceship. What is that thing? That's gross. Let's call it gum. They're calling it a multi-jolt burst. A multi-jolt burst? Multi-jolt burst. Yep. <laughs> That seem like okay the omnitrix feels like a toy now that they can just open it like a door yeah. like that there's no hinge either it's just kind of like hanging on there at least they put a beep. slurp so does that mean all of the led is just on that glass clearly there's nothing going on there this has a lot of weird implications <laughs> This blew my freaking mind when I saw this. I was Me like, too. what? We've never had two in the same episode, let alone five. And such a cool transformation too, like the way the head like morphs into pesky dust. The prisoners have sealed off all the maintenance tunnels. And it's all the tiny ones. I love how this guy is just like a slug. Don't they call it Shorty Squad? I don't remember what they call it. We'll probably hear it. I'm going. You are not going. See, I understood that, but I feel like some people might not have, so I'm glad they added, you are not going after that. They could have said, you are not. Yeah, I don't think I understood it. I'm going. I love the little cat mouth they gave him. Yeah, it looks cute on him. Holy shit, Galvins are huge now. Why are Galvins so big now? Do you think they had a scale chart for this? I'm sure they had some type of like scale chart as like a baseline thing, but I feel like when you start intertwining characters you don't normally use, like these characters probably aren't all on the same chart. It's probably like each of these are on a different chart because it's like this is a background extra, this is a Ben alien, this is a sub character. <laughs> we got that thing and then boom it happens again why is he already mad look behind 
He just hates Ben. <laughs> he was fighting with the Alpha Squadron earlier. Well, not the Alphas, but like the main plumbers. So maybe he's like the only one. He's like, I can't believe I gotta hang out with these guys now. Oh, yeah. come on. What is the point of this guy? That's quite the voice for him. Honestly, I'm not really a big fan of his other voice either. I like this one. It's totally useless. Why, why are you yelling at them <laughs> like they did it? They don't know what they're doing. Good Lord, everybody has just got an awful attitude in this episode. Yeah. Canceled. Uh, no offense, dude. And he doesn't talk either like until like way later too. What if we put a boat steering thing on it? It's the one piece. It's a three piece now. And yet another one. Yay! I was like overjoyed to see that this was possible, that we could get this many new aliens in one episode. I don't remember if I thought they were going to do it more or not. I think I was just like, damn, this is really awesome. I feel like it really made like the idea that Ben has so many aliens. It's always possible for a new one feel like reignited. Cause after yeah. a while it's like getting a new alien became a routine. Like once you get a new alien, you know you're not gonna get another new one for a little bit. But here it's like five in one episode. It was like, what? The Omnitrix? This was them talking to us, saying we are not afraid to break the rules, and I dug that. I believe Derek said that he wanted to leave them all powerless, just have some normal aliens in there. But the studio or whoever, or the toy makers told them to give them powers. I think out of all of them, Pesky does having powers makes sense, but like, Molestache, he could have just been a mole, and that would have been fine. I, I wasn't a fan of the prehensile uh, mustache. Yeah, you know? that, was, that was a bit much. Aw, oh, this guy's the worst. I actually really like Yuri's version of the worst. Like, yeah. I know it's just like a pitch down, but I kind of like it a little bit more than his regular one. It, it, it sounds kind of pathetic. Yeah, it, he sounds more pathetic than like dumb. Aw, oh, this guy's the worst. It just fits for me. It's like, he's just like this average dude. I'm coming. You are not. I love that they gave him a little backpack. My aliens. I know all their weaknesses. You need me. That voice is just so good for this. I love it. Yeah. He, it makes him a kind of adorable too. He sounds like a little dork. I dig it. Ah, uh, come on. This is, is actually quite dork. smart for a non-Kelvin. Thanks. Everybody's racist in this episode. What's going on here? The cerebral crustacean rivalry, I guess. And now he's just like, okay, anybody who's not a Galvin. This is actually quite smart. For a non-Calvin. Dribo, what the fuck, man? We'll shut down the core so the no void gate can't overload. We can rush the bad guys and take them out. Pretty cool looking. And it doesn't have any outlines, though. Like, usually Omniverse CG, they still do, like, an outline pass to make it blend, but this looks too CG. Here we go. I love all the sound effect design for this. Mark, if you're gonna keep talking like that, I'm out. What? Well, you're the one who wanted to be in. You're the one who fought so hard to be in. He's such a brat. Well, maybe I don't want to now. Okay, so they needed that many people anyway. We have completed phase one. A perfect circle. Yeah, that's that's some skill. I love that this whole time that this circle is slowly getting carved out, Rook's just like looking at it. He's admiring the craftsmanship. You see there's a force field around this base. To stop jailbreak. You tricked us into shutting it off. Maybe not so smart for a non galvan after all. You are just <laughs> as complicit. Don't you dare blame this on anybody else. You could have stopped this at any moment, Galvin. Where's your plan? You didn't say shit. That's not going to happen. <laughs> they all pull out. <laughs> the clocks come out. The shock squash guy can't attack if he's insulated. But now Ben's enemies are learning. The Megamorph Girl is sensitive to magnetic fields! I always loved that counter, because it's like, oh, what would affect upgrade? Like something very unorthodox like this. It makes complete sense, too. Circuitry does not like magnets. I wonder if that means like, if Lodestar can fight against like Mechamorphs or something. Like if Ben ever had to fight a bunch of Mechamorphs, if he used Maybe. Lodestar. <laughs> now what's Humongosaur's weakness, huh? What do you got, Ben? <laughs> Keep adding shit to it. It's fine. Yeah. You'll figure it out eventually. I wonder what Azmuth thought when he went in for a diagnostic. Like, yeah. Jesus, what the hell did you do? <laughs> oh, and also yeah, there you perfect go. angles. That's you what's up. Good, you did the good crocodile maths this mm -hmm. time. And where's his leg? He's not indestructible after all. No. Oh. Acquired. Yay. 
bubble helmet can't breathe now. Yeah, he you just starts suffocating. That. The electrical energy cleaned all the insulation off of him. The Omni energy. The Omni energy. Tessina's still just freaking out over here because Blue Kitsch and Dreba aren't doing the magnet thing anymore. She's just still wiggling. <laughs> I really wish we got more of Rook fighting as Upchuck, though. We didn't even see his tongues. It's just a little disappointing. No! <laughs> and thanks to you, I got me a new alien. Just the one, huh? I love that he got this alien from Liam, but you never really see him scan that alien, right? When Humunga Cock slaps him against the wall, he does it Omnitrix first. That's the sample? Oh, okay, I never got yeah. that. <laughs> <sighs> oh, man. Yeah, okay, now it makes so much sense. Yeah, that's always where I thought of it. Okay, no, yeah, it's, you're right. I just, I guess I just never made that connection. Like, I thought this was just them turning everybody back, but that's also where the sample came from. I imagine that, and it's probably more simple than this, but I imagine that the impact of the hit combined with the new piece and the DNA acquiration was enough to jumpstart the Omnitrix back into working. That makes a lot of sense. It's trying to do a bunch of different functions at once, so it resets. It's also cool that he gets Kick and Hawk, and we get to see him compared to Liam immediately, because it also shows like how unique the Omnitrix's DNA sample of a transformation becomes, even when yeah. it's like getting it from someone specific. I love Kick and Hawk's harness, but <laughs> there's the belt. <laughs> He fights so cool too. It's like martial arts, but with the fluctuations of a chicken. Going back to the point of civilian aliens and, and normal stuff. I also like aliens go, their power is just different fighting styles like, like Kick and Hawk and Bullfrag later. Look how small Jerry is right here. And he's on like the same line as Liam. I thought the power was off. Yeah, that's true. I guess you just can't uh, pass up some fried chicken. And that, my friend, is how you make the feathers fly. Yuri sounds really good as Kickin' Hawk, too. You really saved our bacon today, fellas. This little group, with Ben and I as their leaders. Did that sound weird to you? With Ben and I as their leaders. It sounded like the Ben, the and, and the not I were all from different takes and stitched together. Like, listen to how he says it. This little group, with Ben and I as their leaders. It's like, with Ben and I, nothing can stop us. You have got to stop saying stuff like that. You didn't end him. Tennyson is nothing. Asmuth is our enemy. Yeah, but Ben would still try to stop him, though. He's a hypocrite. He's doing the exact same thing with Asmuth that Kyber's doing with Ben. Malware's kind of a hypocrite, too. They're sabotaging each other with their own selfish goals. Because Psychobos doesn't care about Ben, so he let him live. But Ben's gonna be the one to stop all of them. And Psychobos just didn't put that together. <laughs> <laughs> Kyber does an evil laugh. He's sitting that one out. I was like, you know, after so long, I'm, I just, I hate hanging out with you guys. <laughs> Good stuff. Let's start with the plot, which unfortunately is the worst part of the episode. While this is highly regarded as one of the most interesting episodes of Omniverse, because for one, it gave us five new aliens in one go. And secondly, this is one of the rare instances where Ben scans, unlocks, and fights against his own DNA sample. But other than that, it's kind of eh. Like I said in the intro, the lesson should have been about Ben's leadership than just using the Omnitrix. Ben's leadership is really what leads them to victory in this episode. I feel like you could have done this whole plot without Ben's ego getting involved. I know we've also done episodes about Ben's leadership before, but now that Ben's identity has been revealed, he's far more involved with the plumbers than he ever was before, consistently executing missions under the plumber's guidance rather than just freelancing with Gwen and Kevin. This could have been taking the leadership storyline in a unique way where Ben has to learn how to be a leader in the plumbers. And trying to find a balance between how he personally executes his missions versus proper protocol. And in this case, Ben can be right because his knowledge about how to defeat his transformations is the goal. So for once, Ben was right the whole time and doesn't have to learn anything but teach other people what he knows. Or we could just make it about Ben learning that he can't always punch things all the time. Sure, why not? As for everything else, Siphon's goals are pretty basic. Doesn't have to be anything crazy, but also not anything noteworthy. And I'm not gonna lie, it was a little bit crazy how Psychobos was able to so easily steal a piece of the Omnitrix. You can chalk that up to his power and capability and be like, oh, Psychobos is no one to be messed with, but at the same time, it just feels like sloppy writing. If some of Ben's top foes can't even pull this feat off easily, and this is supposed to be like the perfect version of the Omnitrix, but Psychobos can just roll up and do this, it's... 
it's not great characterization i'm only going to give a three while i like the way the people were written in this episode again it's just contradictory against ben's major development and everyone else felt a little bit generic it feels like jeffrey thorne's writing shines a lot better in uaf than omniverse but what really takes it for me is the fact that usually the issue is ben feels like he's not capable without the omnitrix and everybody else has to reassure him and prove to them that he is but this time around they validated ben's insecurities as if he was right you have no special abilities without the Omnitrix. You are a liability. You will get hurt or captured. As if Ben really isn't special without the Omnitrix. Now, there's been loads and loads and loads of proof on why that just isn't true. But, like, if Rook and the others are agreeing that Ben can't fight without the Omnitrix, then what's this what's this even supposed to be about? Like, usually it's about Ben overcoming his own ego and insecurities and learning to fight more diversely. But here... It, they're treating Ben's insecurities like a possibility. It's like, yeah, Ben, if you can't turn into Humongousaur, you are a liability. So not only are we doing this plotline again, but we're butchering all the lessons that this should lead up to. Visuals is a solid five, though. Simply, it's just super cool that Ben gets five new aliens, and a lot of the animation and choreography looks great. Great colors, great character designs. This episode, it, it just looks great. What more can I say? Importance, though. I'm sorry, Kellen, but I'm only gonna give this a three. It's within the realm of other special episodes like Gwen 10 or Dr. Animo in the Mutant Ray or Ken 10, where the episode itself has a very interesting concept that makes it stand out among Ben 10's greater legacy, but that alone just isn't enough to shoot it up to a 5, so like those other episodes, I'm only gonna give it a 3. But entertaining, we can shoot right back up to a 5. It's far from a boring episode. So we're gonna leave Outbreak off at an 18 out of 25, a very nice recovery after Gone Fishing, which you can watch the quick review for over on our second channel. So let's check out those final thoughts. I don't have a lot of final thoughts this time around, I Ironically, but I always find it neat whenever the wiki is able to upload storyboards and animatics. And in this episode's storyboard, Humongousaur's design is from the UAF era rather than Omniverse. Similar to Showdown, where Big Chill's UAF appearance was in place of his Omniverse one. Maybe they started storyboarding these episodes before those designs were even finalized, or the artists were just so used to using UAF model sheets. Either way, it didn't make it into the final episode, so it's fine. And as of last week's poll, most seem to agree that it is best to, if anything, give them a few more appearances, but this really is Ben and Rook's show now. Now, so we should allow Gwen and Kevin to take a back seat and let Ben and Rook shine. But them showing up a few more times couldn't hurt. They're always enjoyable characters. For this poll, we got five new aliens, so it seems pretty obvious that the poll should be which of the five aliens is your favorite? In Outbreak, we got Waka Trout, Pesky Dust, Mole Stash, The Worst, and Kickin' Hawk. Let me know what you think in the community tab when this video goes live. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend, and as always, keep it fizzy.